Hey, what's going on, everybody? And welcome back to Mouse Clicks and Joysticks, episode number four. Sorry we've been away for a while, but uh, life and <laughs> all that stuff, you know, it happens. It happens. I have stopped eating as well because I was <laughs> munching on some Popeyes. But we're going to try to go through this really quick because we both man have to get back to <laughs> munch on some Popeyes, too. Say what's up to the people you're serious. What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome. How y'all doing? All right. Now we're going to try to run through these four heavy topics as fast as possible because there's four major topics. I'm sure there's a lot of other news um, that have gone on, but I think these are probably the four biggest things that have happened over the last couple of weeks. So in the interest of trying to keep it tight and clean, we're going to just do these. Yeah, so we're doing the um, Austin Creed, keep it tight. We're going to be concise. I'm assuming that's a wrestler. You know I know nothing of that. <sighs> Jesus Christ. You don't know about Up, Up, Down, Down? I know about Xavier Woods. That's I his YouTube, I, I, on YouTube channel, Austin Creed, he calls him, though. Oh. Uh, because so, how much, so you how much I'm uh, how aware uh, I am of things. <clears throat> that angers me. God damn it. Why? Because you should know these things. It's Austin Creed. His content's cool. Yes, it is. He is a he's a really good gamer, and I have a feeling that eventually he's going to leave WWE and just focus on that. Um, I mean, I think that's a pretty good transition. If, if I had to pick, it's a hell of a like it's, it's thing, thing because imagine anybody like you know like because like on Twitch now, really briefly, you have all the hip hop people coming in, you have all the sports players of various things. Like to me. You're already an entertainer with a huge following. Go on Twitch. And then, yeah, you can literally spend your days relaxing, playing video games, enjoying yourself, and just making cool content. Also, I should note, Xavier Woods is also super smart. He's, like, really smart. He's not, well, I think, what a lot of people assume, like, to be just a dumb job. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, his parents were super smart. Yeah. They raised him to be super smart. He, You know he's super smart when he convinced Vince to do this. <laughs> If anybody just off a slight tangent, see, I told you it's gonna be a tangent. If anybody who does follow wrestling listens to this, you know all the stories about Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon pretty much runs everything, controls all his people's lives. Oh, it's only a select few that have been able to go to Vince and convince him to do something that they want to do that he may not be keen to. Um, the New Day gimmick is one of those things because. They flipped the script on him. He pitched them with a gimmick where they were supposed to be three happy black people. Well, first they're going to be three militant black people. That okay. You know, so the the, the well, who yeah. are they? The Dudley Boys. Is they were going to basically be the recreation of the Nation of Domination. Oh, look. You're, you're yeah, but then um, <clears throat> they stopped that because the thing. Uh, the kid who got killed by the cop. Damn, I forget the name of the town. Uh, Trayvon uh, or not Trayvon. Um, what's the name? Oh of the yeah, town in that the would not have been. That would have not. Been it's a true. town in the Midwest. I can't remember. Oh, you're talking about Mike Brown. Yeah, Mike Brown. He got killed like weeks before they were gonna pop this out, and then Vince was like, "Oh no, no, no!" So he <laughs> so switched it to three happy-go-lucky, spiritual with the choir in the background singing. Oh my um, black. Yeah, see. he he went from oh. one fucking black stereotype to the one eighty of that black stereotype, we and from, they we went they from mean, Black Panthers to singing yeah. "Kumbaya." Mm -hmm. Fucking oh my god! The church. so mm. when they debuted with this, it didn't get over, but they were fine with that because they were like, "We need to show Vince what it is that's going to make this work," because they always wanted to work together. So. They started to like let the crowd boo them and stuff like that, and they started to play into it and started to like start fighting back with the crowd and just started to do the like heel wrestling things that would make the crowd hate them even more. And Vince saw how it was getting them like attention, and he was like, "Oh yeah, go with that." Yeah. So that already gave um, Xavier Woods the cachet to come to Vince, and he was like, "Yo." I'm really into gaming, and I wanted to always do a YouTube channel, but I want to do a channel where I can bring on my friends. And a lot of my friends, of course, are wrestlers. We all play games. And, of course, with the New Day um, 
popping off, Vince was like, sure. But no, go ahead. I, you could just argue, argue like we're also bringing you a completely new market. Look at the numbers on most YouTube channels. Yeah, and, and you know, numbers, yeah. Shit, all you had to do is like you, one. All you had to do is be liked by Vince for one, but two, <laughs> if you're liked by him and you're gonna make him money, hell yeah, he's with that. So yeah, that's pretty much the genesis of up, up, down, down. Um. So Vince does have a stake in it, if y'all don't know. Rule, rule of thumb, though, and a lesson to be learned from this. All it takes is a good idea. And yeah. knowing how to execute your plan. And you'll just yeah. be able to work out. But we got we got a few news stories, Black. So where do you want to jump off from? All right. So first one we're going to go to, I guess we'll go with the Xbox one. Um, so everybody knows the Xbox Scorpio, which probably should be the name of the console. because That's not, that's a, again, Please don't pull a, a Nintendo Revolution and take a solid sounding console. Like if the Wii was named the Re- Revolution, it still would have applied. But and then turn yeah, it into it something like it should have been the Xbox Toaster or something. I don't know. Although they, I will say this: when they first started it, I have to admit the can we play thing was kind of cute. It, it was no, corny. Like, it was cute. Right, it was corny. This, but watch this. But watch that. Like you could similarly have like talked about how. And funnily enough, it fits in retrospect how big of a revolution the con like the console was bringing. Yeah, no, I agree. The revolution should have been the name of it, but God, the Wii Play was a catchy little. We thing. would like to play. It, it was catchy for the market too that they were going for as well. Yeah. Uh, and but just loved it. And the yeah. view and all of them. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, Microsoft has uh, finally dropped the specs on the Xbox Scorpio. Yep, and uh, just to go over really quick, the mumbo jumbo that they always mm-hmm. put up to sell these things. How many teraflops? You know? So you have eight <laughs> custom x86 cores. Oh my god, they're three custom. Yeah. yeah, in other words, they modified the fucking Jaguar. <laughs> yeah. um, they just don't want to tell you it's a modified Jaguar. Um, that's, then they were like, oh, they're just using the same thing that Sony said. Um, let's see. GPU, 40 customized compute units at... Oh, my God. <laughs> I love how they just want to throw out the, like, all these it's numbers. Numbers that no, like, anybody that doesn't... It makes want, like, no wow. sense. But, Black, the, you missed the most important one. Six teraflops. Yeah. Like, of computing power. Six whole teraflops of computing <laughs> Yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, memory, 12 gigabytes of GDDR5. Which, that's cool. That's actually that's cool, cool, especially since why would the fuck would you come out with the console Wait. with DDR3 memory at first? This is you shouldn't have did that in the first place, you dumbass. What do you mean? It's not like DDR4 was a conflict. We'll keep going because we could, yeah. Yeah, because we can hammer that. Um, memory bandwidth, 326 gigabytes per second. It's pretty good. That gives you a lot of headroom. Um, that on paper that gives you a lot of headroom. Um, Can we talk about the fact that so of the twelve gigs, just really quickly, eight is for the actual games, which is still fine. Eight is still like a fine value for games, uh, most modern games. But four is specifically reserved for the system. Three of which is because they want to run the UI in four K. How about you don't run your UI in 4K unless they have a 4K TV and you don't look and see that's you something reserve, we'll get into later. Why are you reserving three gigs of your it's for the interface? It's like Windows being like, hey, I'm gonna take 25% of your system just to run the operating system. The overhead you is mean like Windows underneath. gaming. Oh god, let's not. <laughs> I don't want to even. <laughs> okay, and then it's gonna have a one terabyte hard drive. They didn't say whether it's gonna be a hybrid or not. So, but whatever, one terabyte. Eh. But it's gonna you're gonna get an external anyway because it's got a four K Ultra HD Blu-ray drive. Right. Um. Which fun fact? That means they're paying Sony money again for this. So Sony makes money off of the Xbox. It's a weird world we live in. Anyway, because if you don't know, Sony owns. Blu-ray. Um, Blu-ray. Uh, now they don't own 4K. I forgot who has 4K Blu-ray, but they so, do own Blu-ray. So, 
we got direct 3d 12 is coming in um in terms of their gpu uh command processor which is which is solid like so what the i guess to sum this all up it's being said that this is going to be the most powerful console on the market yeah like hands down the most powerful console on the market yeah and i think so. that's that's cool that's great i want i want more competition and E3 is going to be the opportunity for them to be like, here's all of our games. Here's every one of our games. Okay. What games do you think they're going to show? All right. So we've already had confirmation from Major Nelson that Crackdown is supposedly on track, I believe, to come out this year. Okay. So they needed this machine to be able to run the cloud. But the oh. cloud. <laughs> yeah, that was the so dumbest thing. <laughs> like people don't get it like it's not it's it's funny not just for microsoft but any of them to look back and just look at the jokes how you how you share games on playstation they hand them a disc what they don't tell you is if you're pl- buying the game digitally you have to be connected to the internet to play like All it's right. it's stuff like that where at the when looking back on it it's incredibly funny just to really just really why did you have to do something stupid like that? Just, just, just be honest with the people. Um, they are apparently going to be able to deal with more backwards compatibility, I believe, like upgrading some of the backwards compatible Xbox 360 games. Um, I guess what what is your stance on it? I, I and have you heard the you rumor? Go first, because yours will probably be a slightly, slightly shorter than mine. The, the, Basically, what I this console still because for those that ever caught uh the whatever uh the the podcast about everything or the show about everything, um, I made the statement that I wanted the Xbox Scorpio to be like a six hundred dollar console because I felt like if they really wanted to knock Sony out of the water and really make a console that is enticing, they go up to that price point, raise everything a little bit, and I hope. I, I don't know. This might be a five. Uh, I think this will be a five hundred dollar console, and I think it'll do a lot of good. It puts Microsoft back in a position where they have the most powerful console. But the issue now is short of Halo, Gears, Forza, Crackdown, and people are like, "Oh well, look, you're still listing stuff." And I'm like, "And indie titles." PlayStation is now just like PlayStation is kind of just sitting here on a bunch of. PlayStation is going to be able to compete with them bar for bar in terms of uh, in terms of uh, software mainstays, yeah, software. And so I feel like Microsoft has to be able to come out super swinging, and that's what you can do. of. I don't think this console has sold itself to anybody because unless you just love the Xbox One and want a more powerful version, same with like PlayStation Four to PlayStation Four Pro, or even if you wanted to switch to Xbox One, the Scorpio is not going to make me as a PC owner buy their stuff nor would it make me necessarily sell my playstation 4 to get a xbox one scorpio so I, I don't think it's in a good spot i think it's theoretically good and interesting but i still don't see it it's market share yeah um so there's a few things that i i have when it, it when this comes into the play okay so you have the specs for the most powerful console ever. Um, that's cool. Can, it can happens. You stop every... using that, by the way. Huh? I, that's a pet peeve of mine. Every time a new generation, the most powerful console okay. ever. I'm like, all right, that's how. But you know, are. it's a trick that they got from their forefathers, and it's yeah. a trick that they should want to run away because if you actually paid attention to your forefathers, you will realize that this does not guarantee your success. Sega for years destroyed the Nintendo systems when it came to hardware specs. The Nintendo, comparatively, if you look at like an SNES, it wasn't even as good as a Genesis. Mm -hmm. And the Genesis came out like two years before that. But the SNES couldn't even match that. That was how good Sega's hardware was. Sega was always leaps and bounds ahead of Nintendo in hardware. But what happened to Sega? Sega went out of business. Was it because they spent too much money on the hardware? No. Was it because, um, you know, Nintendo fooled people into liking their stuff more? No. 
you know, Sega does what Nintendo don't. That was the slogan. Problem was, what Sega didn't do that Nintendo did was they did not offer the library. They didn't offer the software. Go back and look at Sega comparatively when it comes to franchises that spawned from them and go back to Nintendo. Like People are still pining over shit that Nintendo came out with in 1985. Which should say something. Nobody, yeah, I, 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 that's a whole nother tangent right there. <laughs> but, but Sega, outside of Sonic, what Sega title do people covet? Fantasy Star Online. Okay, two name. <laughs> no, like, and that's a stretch. That is and a, that, yeah, that stretch. is a stretch, especially since it's switched over now to the PlayStation, so you can still get it. If you're a really diehard fantasy star person, I'm gonna see Sega games. But name a Sega title that you could think of from back in the day. It was just like, I had to have this, and they need to bring this back. Um, let's look at the Dreamcast. <laughs> That's really hard. Ninety nine nights, I think did all right. But see, that was the problem, and this is the problem that Microsoft is starting to. So, headed to like Microsoft, arguably have more memorable characters with the yeah. Gears franchise. I will make the, the Halo franchise. I will make the argument like with Nathan Drake, they've come close to it. But I don't know if Sony does. Sony have a character that has stayed around consistency. I well, guess, no, but Kratos, that's, that's the thing. Kratos, Kratos may be the person, but like Master Chief, he's still the face of Microsoft, regardless. Right. Of how and many I they drop. totally agree with that. Just like Sonic, still the face. But my thing is, oh, with God, PlayStation, it's a little different. Is that they're not PlayStation One. did it smarter than what Nintendo has done, in my opinion. They didn't tie their whole business to a particular character because we know when Nintendo, when it comes to Nintendo, Mario is the identity. Yep. It's Mario, 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 Mario. Sony is willing to shift. So, you know, it was Crash like Bandicoot. Yeah, then it's, it's kind of like a set, a set of a set of yeah. them yeah. Yeah, per generation. Because like every generation, even like Naughty Dog is always the go-to, but Insomniac as well. Like a lot of the developers on Sony that have been there for a while, they kind of always shift as a new console comes out and give you a different franchise of sorts. Yeah, it's like sure, Nathan Jason was the thing for, for the PlayStation 3, but he's passing that baton over to things like Last Aloy time. for um you know, yep. Aloy, um, uh, Joel and Ellie, or the laws, or the, that whole world right there. Um, I mean, um, you could even say, like, to me, I thought about it. The longest running may be at this point Kratos, because what Kratos yeah. has now span spanned as a major yeah. character tied to Sony. What will soon be three? It'll be three us, consoles and two handhelds, which is pretty big for Sony because I'm trying to think. Like Ratchet and Clank went from PS2 to PS3. Three. Well, Jack there and Daxter was PS4, but oh, Jack and Daxter was just PS2. Uh, um, Bushido Blade was just PS1. I, um, they're probably there are probably some like JRPGs that are a little right. bit more obscure, but like even stuff along the like from software. Funnily enough, like Dark Demon Souls then turned into Dark Souls, and then they got Bloodborne. Which, funnily enough, I really think that we'll probably get another Bloodborne, which was exclusive to Sony. Yeah. And, and it's like, that's the thing. Sony has this whole, diver every generation, you can point to 10 different characters, probably. Or 10 different games, even if it's not even characters, you know. Yeah. You can say SOCOM, you can say Machine of Blade, you can say The Last of Us, you can say Uncharted, um, Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper, Jack and Daxter. Um, I mean, I'll be the first person to say, I as a kid, my favorite genre was platformers. Because on the PS1 and PS2, the number of plat Spyro the Dragon, yeah. like the number of platformers were that were there was ridiculous. Looking at this list of stuff that is franchises from Sega, Crazy Taxi could make a comeback. But see, that's already been ported to other stuff. That's the thing, and that's the uh, that's the. I think they've lost so many of their their things. Their, yeah, it's uh, like it's not theirs anymore. You know what I mean? Which is an issue, like. Uh, Fantasy Star is still probably the biggest one I'm seeing. Yeah. 
That's really because the moment I do that, Shinmu, I guess, is making a comeback. But yeah. I guess that really does bring a parallel to because, yeah, Gears of War is big, but it's nowhere near as big as. Halo. Yeah, and if you notice the last couple of games and their biggest franchises let's, let's not talk about gears have kind of i'm just saying i mean i haven't played gears 4 i'm gonna play yakuza. it well no sony's on yakuza now pretty much sony's fuck. always had yakuza yeah fuck. <laughs> they had yakuza one so yeah but sega was the main developer of some of the earlier ones yeah and then i don't know who took it over for holy shit yeah this is not okay. No, it's not. Say it be, and this is the. I don't think that Microsoft's going to make that hard exit right. that Sega has, because at the end of the day, they still have Windows, and they can still keep things like Gears and so that's Halo what, on there. But at the same time, it's kind of the same scenario where you're banking on me wanting to go spend hundreds of dollars on your system because it's the best thing on the market. Just like Sega banked everybody to go out and buy the Sega Saturn because it was the best thing on the market. It's like you were supposed to buy the Dreamcast because it was the best thing on the market. I, I think, and I think, I think what they're doing is because that's to them they lost the PlayStation coming into this generation. Whether you want to say so or not, I say they haven't lost and they didn't lose. They got beat out of the gate. However you want to phrase it, they they lost out of the gate. And a lot of it was because people were and people's biggest claim for the PS4. Even working in retail, talking with people was it's the best. It's it's more powerful. It's the most powerful console, and I think the narrative that has been pushed, media, um, and so people that don't really care agree. about it. I honestly think that what happened with them was their marketing scheme, just like what happened to me with the PlayStation Three. The way that they came out and presented the PlayStation Three and talked about it and things about get an extra job and all what? of this. It, I don't remember. You know, I was I was a child. I was a child. Yeah, no. Um, it wasn't um Cass, but I forgot who it was. Who, when people asked about the price of the PlayStation Three, he was like, "Well, if, I mean, can't afford it. Maybe you should just try to get another job to get what." Oh, fuck. Yeah, exactly. He did a Don Matrix. People forget they Sony had their Don Matrix. <laughs> they had their Don Matrix doing that, and it was like, okay, you got a higher price product that you got a boneheaded exec saying some dumb shit. On top of, um, you know, all these other things where Sony was such a prioritized um, system to where developers didn't really like developing on it. And Xbox was more PC, which was easier to develop for them. So they had their perfect storm of marketing failure. It's like I think part of the the biggest part of uh, Microsoft falling behind wasn't necessarily that the PlayStation was the better system. I think that ended up being what people said, but at the end of the day, Microsoft alienated a lot of people with a lot of their policies and a lot of things they wanted to do. The whole, you buy the disc, you install it, you don't need it no more, but you can't sell it back. Okay, well, maybe we'll let you sell it back once, but if somebody buys it, they can't sell it again. Um, that's for physical um, copies. You know, that's like, okay, no, that's not how it's worked. Why are you doing that? Always have to be online. If you're not online, if you don't connect within three days, we're going to shut your shit down. Um, hello, I take time off. I might travel with my thing and I want to play games. I may not have a connection. I can't get, be guaranteed to get a connection every Which, The funny part is to me, like, that was blown up and all they really had to do was be like, like, may, do like Steam did. You just have to, before you leave, set your console to the offline mode. But they didn't. That's not what it was. But no, that's, was. That, that's the funny thing. Like, it, it, <laughs> to me, that blew up so much because Microsoft was so hard set on their stance. Yeah, it was just like, nope, you have to. You Where know? I'm like, if all you're like, yeah, like the idea, because anybody's like, well, what if I travel with my console? Set it to offline mode until you get some place with Wi Fi. Which would have been fine if they would have gave you that option. But no. What did they say? Well, if you can't always be online, then. And you could even say, you have an option. Say, and that's the Xbox 360. Look, you could even go as far to say, like, Set it offline and we'll give you a week without having to reconnect it. And then no, it shouldn't be no. But no, I only said it because even then, if you can't get to a McDonald's with free Wi-Fi within a week, I'm not care. I'm sorry, I'm not. No, no, like, but it's, it's small things like that. To me, like they could have their stance, but they were so hard set on like nothing at all. It's kind of like 
I want my cake and I'm going to ha have my cake and I'm going to eat it too. Or you could have the cake and share it and people won't really care as much as long as they get a little bit of cake. But if you're going to be like, no, you get nothing, then it's just like, well. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, they presented it as more of a media box, not necessarily gaming. Con and that kind of took but people that's, back. That's because people, let's not talk about but it. But I, I will say this. Yeah, I, I do blame a lot of Xbox fans because being around mostly all of my friends who own Xbox, when it came to a conversation with um, people who would argue with them, about PlayStation versus Xbox, they would always throw out, well, we got Netflix first, and we're able to watch ESPN, and y'all can't do that stuff. So the conversation kind of set itself up set itself up because you guys were touting this as reasons why you need to have the 360 over the PS3. Like, back, back <laughs> during the 360, uh, to me, always the smartest argument was like, what what shooting franchise do you have that compares to Halo? Yeah, people, people, and it, this is the funny thing. People will always be like, "Well, we have Uncharted." Well, they have Uncharted. That's a lot in retrospect. When did Uncharted Two come out? Because Uncharted One was Uncharted Two didn't come out until two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Honest, like Uncharted was not the powerhouse it was to Uncharted Two. No, it wasn't. Uncharted was a good game, but it wasn't. Uncharted didn't put that good. game on the map because. Every yeah. I remember when Uncharted 2 was coming out and people were like they're gonna have a tacked on multiplayer. And like that was the conversation around the game. And then all of a sudden it was like, no, it's it doesn't feel tacked on, and the story is amazing, and you have to play this game. And before that, it was like, Well, what franchise does Sony right now have to complete with Halo? Killzone? Ha! Yeah, Killzone yeah. really you think Killzone kill was and to me, yeah. that was like a smart argument to be like, Well, yeah, like regardless of what you have, you're still missing out on this versus saying I can watch Netflix on my gaming console. Okay. Yeah, I literally remember a coworker coming up to me bragging about the whole deal with ESPN that year they announced it at E3. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, I have a laptop. Really? Yeah, like, I got cable TV. I can watch ESPN anytime I want to. What the fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? It's like stuff like that. Just like, no, <laughs> that's not. A valid reason for me to pick this up, yeah. But this, like, that's the predicament I think that Microsoft's in. They're gonna have this beast of a console, you know, reportedly, and they won't have Halo to debut with it. Um, they won't have if they rush a Halo. I am. When was the last? When did Halo Ooh. Five come out? Halo Five came out last year. Halo Five was the 2015. No, 2015. no so it'll be two no, years. I will. I bet you at E3, uh, it's be, it's, we might get a Halo dropping in November. Because I always make the joke: the way it always goes is generally there's a Gears year, um, there's a Gears year where they promote Gears, and then there's a Halo year usually. And like, because they generally will kind of alternate the two in terms of the space they occupy, because they lost Call of Duty, which was the third one that really occupied that space. Well, see, and that's what I think is another thing, too. It's like a lot of 360's oral was built on the fact that, you know, that the developers preferred to develop on it and they bought a lot of exclusives. Mm -hmm. And it's like now that you don't have that third party, um, you know, mask on, what's your first party looking like? You just canceled a bunch of first party games. You haven't talked about some first party. You talked all this when you debuted. 14 studios working on games. Um, um, I haven't really seen much. You know, again. I, I'll make a point. I think Microsoft also was set up for success with this. And the reason I say they were set up for success, um, the reason I they were set up for success is look at what Nintendo did with Zelda. They literally had like four games at launch with one of them being a major franchise of theirs, and look at how well the console sold. Nintendo basically told them, it's like, if you put out a Halo game, people will probably buy... It's but you know... Thing. It's the same thing I said. The best way... part the of best. the reason why the uh, Switch sell so well, too, isn't necessarily because everybody knew Zelda was coming out. Because you were going to get those people who were going to buy it. Regardless. I think word of mouth for Zelda, because... A lot of people I know really weren't going really to get it or didn't get. I've seen more people buy it post launch. Post launch, 
than during launch because Zelda was something that was exciting to die hard fans. But then the reviews came out and everybody was like, this is one of the most amazing games ever made. But I and think that's, that's what thing, that's got the key. What it did was it was enough of a thing because everybody was still talking about Zelda because that was the rook. Are you buying the switch for Zelda? And then when the reviews finally came in, it would have already been in the spotlight that the people that were on the fence. Oh, wait, the game is like game of the year. 10 out of 10. It's amazing. You look, I'm going to buy it. Now, Microsoft does that with the Xbox Scorpio. All of a sudden, Halo on a new engine. All these new features, new this, new that, and continuing the story. And you bring all of that and you drop it at launch, telling people, yeah, you'll be able to do and play it. Boom. And I think that's that that's the that's the key. Because when you do that, they're gonna drop a Forza this year. Um, if they drop okay, do you out, think Forza would be the game to get everybody to get up no. and buy? All right, so now let's move on. Crackdown is the other game that we know. Do you think Crackdown is going to be the game? See, that's the issue. You asked you asked the question correctly, and I fucking hate you for it. Do I think Crackdown could be the game? No. Could is is it good enough to be that? If it's more like Crackdown One than Crackdown Two, I think so. Because what I still say is a lot of people bought Crackdown One for the Halo Three multiplayer beta, and then realized they had a great. Then they had realized they had a great. See, that's the problem. That's just like that's why um, it doesn't get the recognition. Everybody was that game that everybody bought. Uh, Bulletstorm for Gears Three. I remember that specifically. Why I like got you had to have the disc too because they figured out what cracked with Crackdown like. The moment the beta ended, everybody sold it. So to play the Gears beta, you had to keep it, and they didn't put it out at the launch of the okay, game. Okay, but this is my other um, is issue. This bleeds into the only other big problem that Microsoft had is the cross-platform thing. They have to have these games run on the old hardware. Furthermore, most of their exclusives are going to PC, which... Right now, PC gaming is probably the hottest commodity because I honestly you know, think really people are riding that wave now. I think I seriously think that a lot of people, even though I think you know most of it is people who just got introduced to it and then they fell in love with it, or it's those people who hear everybody else is going to do it, so why don't I join in with them? But Either way, as PC, well- PC is getting a big push right now, and the fact that I can play. Like for someone like me or for people who are already on the PC kick, the fact that I could play pretty much all of your best games on that system. And if I'm really into this whole gaming thing because I want to play games at the best, like run it at the best, you know, possible um, specs and quality is shit. I just buy your shit on PC. Fuck, I'm buying your shit. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like, why am I? Who but no, I think that's what is also so smart because the people that aren't going to build a PC that just want a really strong console that looks the best, and you have a 4K TV already. Great. Yeah, but you still got to give those people a reason to want to buy it. Just beyond, it's the most powerful, and it runs on PC. And it, you know, it's the most powerful, and it gives me validation for my damn TV. You know what I mean? It has to, and maybe this is me. I mean, you're going to get those people who are just going to buy it regardless because there's people out there who, fuck it, they're going to spend money just to spend money. Um, And that'll be a big, good enough excuse. But I don't know many people who that's a good enough excuse for. I just think there's console gamers that will say, like, that could, if they're looking, if they're not looking to switch to PC, I think they're trying to corner another area of the market. The, like, I don't. I want better, but I don't really want to be. Uh, I don't really want to. Um, God, my mind is not working today. Like for me, I know I what you're saying. Like you want a better quality product, but you don't necessarily. You you want, want you want to you want to upgrade, but you don't want to go whole. You don't want to go full bore on it. You want to just get something that'll work. Do what you need to do, and you don't have to have any quote unquote hands on. Like uh, that's that's an argument that a lot of people still make about PC game is that it's too much work. I don't want to deal with it. It can be, but at the same time, if you're really all about wanting the best, like running game, it's work that's worth it. 
that that's the thing. So you don't really want the best running thing. You just want to get something that's easy. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> um, to be quite honest. But anyway, it's that's another whole another argument too. But no, it's it's going to all come down to software, in my mind, because right now, Sony's killing it. Um, they picked a bad year, in my opinion, <laughs> to come out with this. With Sony now hitting its stride on here's the exclusive. issue. Here's the issue. I think I think that's the nobody would have guessed this. <clears throat> nobody would have guessed that the next like year to two years of Sony's roster would essentially be the sequel year like the sequel years is with new ips that look really promising yeah like nobody would have guessed that you're going to be getting horizons an expansion for uncharted uh days gone um new god of war new god of war um, the follow-up to last of us next year getting fucking kojima's gay like you you can't uh, guess that all of a sudden and they still haven't introduced everything that's the thing Oh, Spider-Man. Shit. Fuck. It's it's going to be pretty... It's going to be pretty interesting seeing how this works out. But yeah, software definitely has to... They're going to have to um, kill it with the software in my mind. Otherwise, they'll it'll sell, but not as well as they want it to. And I still sincerely think that this is the last hurrah for an Xbox um, hardware. I don't think that you'll ever see any more Xbox hardware after this if it doesn't sell to the level they want it to. Yeah. But but that's uh, I mean I think it'll Microsoft knows what they're doing of anybody. But the only reason I say this is because the guy who's in charge of Microsoft he wanted to get rid of it four years ago, which I don't I I don't think that that's the worst thing. I mean they haven't been like Sony and well no because let's, let's release be quite Vita-like honest, like product. Reality, and this is business talk and most people won't understand this, but as a product, Microsoft hardware has n- never. Made them a, a huge major, profit. Microsoft has and will, I think, forever be a major software company. They're yeah, ever like all of a sudden, the software and the cloud services oh, is their backbone of their funding. My, the Xbox brand has made them good endorsement money, and it has made them is when good you're... software licensing fees. But the hardware itself has always been kind of a money pit. Is is Star is uh is totally. God. Is Microsoft's uh, Windows still like the majority of the market share? Um, yeah, slightly ahead of the cloud service because the cloud service uh, Azure is fucking kind of taking over <laughs> as far as business cloud. Because I I just wonder just because of the fact that God, <laughs> like it's it's really interesting because people I think I forget that a lot. Microsoft does Sony Sony is an entertainment company first and foremost they just make entertainment products yeah. and their divisions if you ever watch a lot of the divisions go up and down there's always down times for each division and there's always up times blu-ray was great for them because they essentially beat out again something else they beat Microsoft out for which was um yeah, they beat them out for basically the format. Uh, HD HD video versus HD DVD versus Blu-ray. Yeah. So it's yeah, and it's like Sony the PlayStation it it rely it gives them a lot of capital. So for Microsoft to just say, you know what, we don't need to make another Xbox, is not a big deal for them because, in truth, the Xbox isn't their money maker, and they're not going to miss it. Just like they were able to say fuck it to the cell phones, you know, <laughs> they Windows bought a phone cell phone company thing. and Windows, then they shut it down. That Windows shows phones. you how much you don't care as a company. That's how much money you have. You can buy a fucking cell phone company and then just close it. Right after, I'm like, I don't need this. 
I mean, we tried, but oh well. Yeah, oh, yeah. Fuck it. We still making our money, and I think that's how a lot of the people at Microsoft are looking at Xbox, with the exception of Phil Spencer. I think Phil Spencer, you know, God bless you. You're doing everything in your power to make sure. Yo, that, I that I would make the, I would make the argument like Phil Spencer deserves so many awards. He does. He really does. For what he's done, like it is low key amazing. Now, I, honestly, if Microsoft did shut down, and I'm somebody who's looking to maybe possibly make a console, I'm hiring him. Or if I'm Sony, I'm hiring him first, so I could keep him away from whoever is possibly out there trying to bring competition to them. Because that man is, yeah, he he's single turned around. He single handedly turned around the company. I, I yeah. give well, anybody has to say like I. For yeah, no, that division purposes, was wrecked when he stepped in. For all intents and purposes, I would tell just like he has done wonders. Not only that, like he's handled himself in a business fashion as well as not like he's made it to where he's any conversation with him is focused around his brand and not necessarily for a long time the 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 a conflict with another brand. He he realizes he doesn't have to tear another brand down to build his brand up. Yeah. Yeah, and he's very engaged. He's very honest. You know, very forthright. He's he's refreshing, and it's good to see. Um. Yeah. So, I, you know, I I hope they do well. I I just hope that they don't just bank on this. We're the most powerful thing as their whole cell because it ain't gonna work for too long like you you're gonna need you're gonna seriously need to um come with software if you don't i'm sorry yeah i'm really sorry anyway moving on speaking of sega Sega. So, this is something that affects uh, streamers out there. So, Atlas, via the voice of the overlord Sega, who most people you probably don't realize this, Sega now owns Atlas. God, uh, why? Yeah, I know. It just ruins things. Um, so, Persona 5 came out a couple of weeks ago, and before it came out, there was a article, well, I guess it was just a blog um, posting, where, and I love the way that Atlas framed it, because they were like, hey, our overlords in the East, they said that shit, and I was like laughing. Uh, basically, the gist is, if you're going to play Persona 5, one, you can't stream it through the PlayStation 4. Um, it's been completely, completely. blocked. You I give them, I give them credit. Share button and do anything. I completely give them credit because, like, they even address that in the the document to where, like, no, nah, we're just dislabeling everything, cutscenes, everything. You're just not play the game yeah. by yourself. You have no function. yeah, no share function whatsoever. Um, works for that. And if you are someone like me and Strix, who have capture devices and I've streamed on Twitch, by the way, go to Euro Strix. On oh, Twitch, no. um, he's be streaming nightly. Uh, after midnight, it gets rowdy. So run 10, 10 p.m. <laughs> to 3 a.m. And yeah, after midnight, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not Howard Stern bad because I can't. I mean, go explicit on visually explicit on uh, <laughs> Twitch, but uh, verbally we can get away with a lot. So yeah, hide your yeah. kids, hide your wife if you come in and after. <laughs> Plus, it might be an or annoying. Or bring your wife. A, if you, if it might be an annoying rodent in this chat too. You might not want. To. Wow. No, uh, that bedtimes are earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's an inside joke, people. You won't get it, and if you do, you will definitely understand. Anyway, um, but yeah, check him out nightly. A lot of fun seeing him die over and over again. 
on <laughs> uh, Battlegrounds. God. And Shaz, I still say you that you take the whole team down. I still stand by that. Um, but yeah, so basically, if you are streaming on, on uh, with a capture device, you are limited to a certain amount of things that you can stream. In particular, there's a certain date in the game. I believe it's July 7th that you can stream up to before they will be making sure you don't go past there. And if you do, they'll do up to and including having your channel shut down so that you don't divulge any content that they see as too spoiler-ish because they don't want people sharing the heart of the story. Um, the rules also apply to YouTube as well. There's certain rules to the Let's Play as well. You're not supposed to record past a certain point um, and show certain content in your Let's Plays. So it, uh, overall, basically, Sega just would prefer you not stream it at all. I'm going to let you go on this because th you stream more than I do these days, and I'm sure this is something that you probably have a bigger um, opinion on. So the floor is yours. Or not, shall we say. He's probably muted himself. Bad timing. Thought I timed that correctly. Ah, it's okay. Technical difficult. This is really quick, just to give my opinion on it. Um, I don't think that it's a smart move. Um, I understand them having the right. Um, you know, which is cool. I have no problem with them having that right to do that. At the same time, I don't think it's necessarily smart of them to do such because I think it kind of sets a bad example. Of course, as we discussed earlier with Sega, Sega kind of, sort of, um, Sega can have issues with how they handle things in business. Um, so hopefully, you know, I don't know. It's not going to affect them because they picked the right game to do this with. I think they picked a game that's so popular that I don't think it's going to affect its sales. So, I mean, I feel like they're going to be justified in their decision by this because uh, Persona 5 is going to sell well. People are going to play it. Um, people are streaming it up to that point at least. Um, there are probably going to be some that go past it. And Sega may, may not actually go after them. Um, I don't know. Has anybody been? Like, has someone uh, actually been gone after? I don't, I honestly don't think so. So um, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how this all plays out. Because, I mean, I understand the argument from content creator side that this is a way to get a product viewed, to give it extra eyes, some free advertisement, so to speak. Um, you know, the most it costs is ad revenue on YouTube, or if you're a Twitch partner, you know, you get your Twitch partnership stuff from your views and follows and things like that. Um, but it's not money coming out of Sega's pocket to advertise this. Um, so their benefit is, hey, people watch, they might find the game interesting. They run out and they buy a copy of the game because they saw their favorite YouTuber or their favorite Twitch streamer, what have you, go out, play this game, and boom, there you go. That helps you, Sega. But uh, at the same time, it's their product. And at the end of the day, being their product, hey, when you have ownership of a product, I mean, I know we like to use the argument, hey, we paid our 60 bucks, we should be able to do whatever we want. Um, 
all that small print that you see says otherwise. Uh, so you have to understand, that, like that, legally speaking, no company has to, at no point, allow you to stream their content, to allow you to record and edit and post their content. It, at any point, every company can pretty much say, look at the agreement that you signed when you agreed to um, play this game by basically loading the software and hitting OK. You agree to our rules so that any time they can restrict you. They, you're not. Um, yeah, you're not guaranteed at all to be able to do what you want. It's unfortunately is there's rules, people. There's rules. Um, is it a good rule? Probably not. Uh, but at the same time, hey, it's the property that they own, and they want to protect it. They want to keep people from doing whatever. Sometimes, um, you know, because people can profit in so many ways. It's just like with Halo and the red versus blue. Um, Rooster Teeth had to, you know, deal with Microsoft to be able to get that to continue and to be successful as it was because Halo's Microsoft's. Um, you're taking Microsoft stuff and you're reworking it to make a product that you're selling and making money off of. And that's Microsoft property, those, you know, those characters, that's their identity. Um, they can come in and they can say things. It's it's all sorts of things. Uh, people just need to realize it's you know it's not. I don't know. It, it's 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 just, it's just a real complicate complicated, very um, interesting situation. Which, like I I I'm not angry at them. Kind of disappointed that they went that route, but See, that's the difference. I am angry at them. Yeah. I, it's it's just like I think you're making a mistake, but hey, I'm uh, angry from I, I am angry at them though, for one thing. Yeah, and I figured you were. So for, I'll. For one thing. It actually is one thing. Um, and to anybody out there, the one thing that I'm actually angry with Atlas about, uh, and Sega by extension, is when they dropped it, not what they did, because. When they when, what they did, they're in full right to do so. It's a shitty thing to do. They don't. Japan has had a history of not understanding YouTube and Twitch and online platforms really well. They're kind of still kind of in the past to some degree. So I, I, I can't get mad at that. That's going to happen. Uh, but the fact that they dropped this after the game came out, after they sold a million copies, is what my issue is. Because that's very exploitative of a consumer. The idea is that you wait till after to to release a policy that you know is probably going to be fairly confidential. Yeah, and no, then to no, and then to no, tell no. people essentially that you will be we will attack you if you don't play by our rules to give people an ultimatum. Um. Yeah, no, that was kind of shady. They got your money, and then they said, "Hey, good news." Um. You got the game that you like. Now here's the bad news. You can't do what the yeah. fuck you want. Um, somebody I follow uh, legitimately posed the question. So does Persona 5's thing change how you're gonna change how change your like anticipation to play the game? My answer was yes because of a couple of things. As somebody that streams, and I'm lucky enough to get in like five to six hours a night of streaming. Uh, if I get a morning stream in, we'll say eight hours a day. Most people can't do that. When I was working at GameStop. I got like four to five hours maybe on a night where I just decided I wasn't going to get too much sleep. What that meant was I wasn't gaming as much off stream. Most of my gaming happens on stream whenever I'm gaming. That's just when I go. So if I can't stream your game, especially when you add like you can't stream past a certain point in the game. You can't stream certain cutscenes or any of the kind of dungeon climaxes or the boss fights there. 
Can't do those two things. Uh, if you're making YouTube videos, there's a limit to how long the video can be, which is fine. You don't want it all in one video. But there's all these constraints, streamer or content creator-wise, that I could try to dance around it. I could ignore it and, as a growing content creator, hope that my channel doesn't get taken down, which uh, anybody that ha knows me um, knows that I've already had problems and I always already have had to fight Japanese companies before. Um that's why my where my issue comes from is that like I, I, i'm not gonna dance i don't want to dance in that gray area anymore or that area where like what i'm doing is technically wrong what i'm doing can get me in trouble and there are repercussions and then if you do that you're you're hurting yourself within the industry because it shows that you're not really abiding by people's policies um like you're you're ignoring a game developer's wishes and that can go off in a multitude of ways and this is this entire situation was atlas put people in a horrible spot but rather than like doing the right thing and by saying like here is the moment people got their embargoes for the game they it should have been early like even if it's just a couple of days before the game comes out and tells us then people don't pick up their copy of the game and you, so now you have a group of streamers on Twitch who are literally like, I'm just going to stream past the point. Do you think that's wise, though? Um, for some of them, it's perfectly fine. Because they're the people that are too big to fail. True. Like, there are people who, I forget whose stance was, he essentially said, I'll stream it past the date. If they ban me for a day, I'll come back the next day and keep on streaming it. If anything comes down, he could make a Patreon and probably make enough money to cover his lifestyle and live without any issues. Mm -hmm. But the issue is like the smaller medium guys, because I know how that feels. There are smaller and less known people that can't take that hit. And so they're forced to pick, make a decision of, is it the game I love, a game that I love, I like, a game that everybody is already championing as well, much like Zelda, could be a game of the year. Or do you just like just not? And so it falls on priority for me. I can't play if I can't play a game on a stream, which sounds really rude. There are plenty of closed betas, alphas, whatever that I've played. But the fact is, I get them in in very small chunks because I, I don't have time just to sit around and play them if I can't stream them. Because you just don't have that much time in the day. If in a perfect world, there'd be 100 hours in a day. The sun would and everything would be done, and all I could, had to do was sit here and play games. I could get to everything, but unfortunately, that's not how it works. And being feeling like I'm being attacked because I want I actually like your product is, and also this doesn't apply to anybody that buys the game a year from now. They're not gonna I, they're not gonna enforce this like two, three, four, ten years down the line. <clears throat> Also, another and thing that's the weird thing about it, too. I find it's like you're, you've got this hard stance, and okay, um, what? And I want to make this also clear this game has been out since September in Japan. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It's like it's not like this game isn't brand new, although, okay, understandable. People in Japan aren't going to do the same things that we're going to do here. But, but, uh, I, but I, what I was going to, even on top of what you're <laughs> saying right now, it's a very simple solution. We're adults. Gamers are adults. You're, 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 you have the ability to make your own choices. If somebody doesn't want to get spoiled, don't go into the stream. If they do, that's not your fault as the developer. And that's the biggest perplexing problem that I have with it. Like I said, it's not that I'm angry. I'm just disappointed because it's just like, you're basically banking on nobody having any common sense. Not like um, it, it's it's the same I say about a lot of things. If you don't want to be bothered, don't go there. I think I think you and I have had this conversation before, where I always made the point of my issues with both my issues with both devs and gamers is like how the other wants to treat. Some gamers want to be treated like kids. Some gamers don't want to be treated. They want to be treated like adults. Companies treat gamers like kids sometimes when a lot of times if they just treat them like adults, we we have to delay our game because of X, Y, and 
you don't need to say, I need to delay my game because of polish. I need to delay my game. We need to fix X, Y, and Z. And that's another situation where you're trying to baby somebody. You're only allowed to read 100 pages before next week's book club. Don't read past there. Johnny, what page are you on? Put the book down, Johnny. I'm going to take it from you, okay? As opposed to saying, Johnny, don't fucking read the book past page 100. And if you do know how to like deal with it and not... Because I know people that were spoiled. My dude, Shout out to my dude, Chaz. And he was spoiled on the game when it came out in Japan because some dude decided to go to his Twitter and just uh, tweet him with screenshots the ending. That's lame as fuck. But we're still sitting up here like those are the people that I feel like you should be chasing after. Not streamers who care just as much as you do about not being spoiled. As a fan of Dark Souls games, do you know how annoying it can be? To have somebody, hey, there's a weapon over there. Hey, this is how you beat this boss. Hey, <laughs> use this. Like, it is it is just as annoying for us, and I feel like you're kind of taking away. There are people that want that experience of everybody being surprised, yet apparently we're not adult enough to change the fucking channel. Like, that legitimately made me mad. It's You don't have the decency to tell us before you release the game, and then you want to, like, say that we're basically children that you have to hold our hand and, no, you, you don't want to be spoiled about it. Fun fact, games that have really good endings and really good stories still hold up even if they're spoiled. Yeah. So the few games that I knew the ending about, because people, you know, especially on, if you're on the internet. If you're on the internet and you're getting upset about being spoiled, um, <sighs> I've gotten to the point where I can't sympathize with you anymore because you know how people are. You know, like, if you're watching a TV show and you can't see that episode and it's a popular TV show, you know what? You're going to find out what happened to Glenn on The Walking Dead if you turn your Twitter on. Yep. Okay? On the night it comes out. Yep. So to think about whether or not you want to go on Twitter that night. Is Twitter that important that night? <laughs> you know, things like that. It's like you have, and yeah, you're right. They took that, they basically made the decision that, you know what, people aren't adult enough to make that decision on their own. So we're going to make it. For rated? What is Persona rated? Uh, what is Persona rated? Uh, let me see. Persona 5 rating. Because please tell me it's not an M rating. If Persona 5 is rated M, Persona 5 officially rated M for Mature by ESRB. So you're saying people over the age of 17 are too stupid to fucking not watch it? Yeah. That aggravates me. That, like, legit is <sighs> so insulting. Well, yeah, but I hate to no, do this. It, it, no, but I it, hate it, to do it, this, but the it, place, it, like Devil's Advocate, do we not know of a lot of people who are that stupid and then would complain? If they did that, right? If they did that, tell them why did you watch it? Yeah, no, I mean I agree. They need to be yelled at for that being that stupid. Guess what? But, I didn't want to get spoiled. What was the last game that I played that I didn't want to get spoiled on? Um, I didn't want to get spoiled on Horizons. So when my dude Mavatak, my dude Steph, were playing, I went in and said hello, and I left. Yeah. Shout out to my dude Steph that plays Dark Souls and is still playing through it for the first time. He'll come to a stream where I'm playing the DLC and literally scroll down and just read chat or hear me talking. And I'm I don't say anything specific enough and the cutscenes aren't to a point where he'll just mute cutscenes. Like there are ways that you can still handle the situation where you don't you don't have to just say like, Hey, here's Big Brother to tell you no. No. It just feels so insulting to me to the point where, like, why would I want to fuck with Atlas? And then Atlas had the audacity, I believe, to come out with another game and be like, but you can stream this one. No, no. They came out with another game that you can't stream. And it's a dumb game at that. Uh, oh, what's the name of that game? It's like a Tetris-like um, game. You can't stream it at all. Like, nothing. Why? None of the story mode. It's, like, it's the story mode in the Tetris-like game. They won't let you show 
shit because, for it. you know, like not streaming uh, near Automata, Square Enix would have definitely gotten as many sales of that game as it did. <sighs> it's not like that game has like 15 endings and people still care enough to play through the game themselves. It's not like a best example. How popular are Telltale game playthroughs? Yeah. A game literally that is no no gameplay but story. And I every single Telltale game I've ever watched, I bought a copy of. Yeah. And again, it goes back to there's a point where you can stop. Always a point where you can stop. You just watch the first part. You know? It 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 it's so aggravating to me that like I feel like I have to I have to the developer feels like I'm I'm too much of a child to but they still want my money. I want that to be clear. They still were telling you to go buy the game. Oh yeah, you gotta buy the, buy it. You gotta buy it. They want their money, but you know you can't do no. Don't do that. Don't do that. So yeah, I mean it's it's an interesting thing. Hopefully, um, it won't become a trend. I don't think it will become a trend. I just think it's kind of like you said. It's it's the Japan thing um sadly japan has been very very close-minded when it comes to certain things in gaming because look at all the complaints people have for nintendo and things like that uh or just look at what capcom did <laughs> with street fighter 5 and this <sighs> yeah um there's a reason why japanese development in gaming has suffered over the years uh they have not adjusted very well with the times and growth sad um well while you calm down a bit we're gonna move to the shortest uh bit of story uh a bit of topic which is something just for me and it's about battlefront 2 which will be coming out on november 17th which, of course, I'm excited for because I'm just. What about the Call of Duties? Fuck that game. Um, I love the Call of Duties, black. No, Call of Duty go to hell. I don't care if they fucking make it so you can play um, as Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Predator or something like that. I'm not buying it. Yo, that would be lit. Hmm? That would be lit. I actually wish there was like a predator game kind of in the sense of if if the Jason game pops off, that's what they need to work on next. They need to work on like a game where you can be a team of mercenaries who are being hunted by a predator. And you got to escape the jungle. Get to the chopper. I want that. I want that. Anyway, Battlefront is coming out, and um, I know I'm excited. Are you excited? We briefly discussed this. Until I see gameplay that is not old Battlefront. <laughs> I don't care. Like, it's cool that they have a story mode. Yeah, I could care less. Um, I just... <laughs> I mean, I will, I will say I could care less. I will be intrigued because this is actually becoming part of canon. So this makes the story more intriguing. There is going to be a book accompanying it um, that's going to basically give you detail on the female, um, I don't know, is she an antagonist, protagonist, however you want to put it? Um, whoever, whichever side you root for, I guess is how you frame her, um, where they're going to discuss her background and give you like a whole history on her and the elite commandos and all of that. So it's it's actually pretty cool that they're making this a real Star Wars like thing with the story. Like this is actually going to be stuff that leads up to where we're at with the current um, trilogy. So and it's going to span over time and you're going to see other things that happened that you didn't see in the past. So it should be, it should be cool. Um, I'm a Star Wars like fanatic. So 
I'm looking forward to. But I go ahead. You were saying, and guess what? I'll be able to watch you play through the story because it's not fucking Atlas. <laughs> so fucking yeah, will be. by that. I'm so fuck. I'm I'm I'll care enough about the story, but unless there's a major change to uh the multiplayer. Yeah, it's just not a fun gameplay loop to me. And send all of your send all of your hate to uh at Black Magus on Twitter. Oh no, because a lot of people tried to bury it and say it wasn't that good a game. Uh, to be fair, it was a solid gameplay it game. Was the uh, same fucking game. It me. was the same as the old ones, as I've argued with many people. But who Black, don't there weren't as many modes. It really wasn't that many modes back in the day. And the worst the but the worst argument to me was there's no space. And it's like yeah, there wasn't the space in the original Battlefront either. You flew from ship to ship. And yeah, in the Battlefront 2, when they added space, you had to fly to the ship to get off your fucking to walk around. ship to walk around and shoot stuff. Battlefield ba- Battlefront was to me always the de facto rent game growing up. My cousins are coming over, we can rent a game, buy a copy of Battlefront, you know, and four people can play. That. The thing is, that. what people didn't get was this wasn't meant to be the Star Wars game that's supposed to be like the movie where you have a lightsaber scene and go to a like, space battle scene. No. The whole premise and the reason why Battlefront came to be was because they had an idea of what would it be like to see what it would be to actually be a troop on the ground fighting the actual war, not one of the heroes or not one of the pilots, because they've already done the pilots over and over again. X-Wing and TIE Fighter series had that. This was the opposite. It was supposed to be, what is it like to be a trooper? And I don't know why people never understood that, why people want to act like it wasn't. Um, Like, you know, I don't know what type of rose color or drunk goggles you have on, but that was the purpose of Battlefront. And the la- the remake served that fucking purpose. Yep. It it brought it back the way it was intended to be. So I don't know what's wrong with y'all, but hey, whatever. <laughs> it's just, I, I am really mad because it's, it's one of those things like, I, I'm tired of people like coming. Out, the, the, wow, this battlefield, the, this this battlefront is so garbage, man. I remember it wasn't from when In I was. Fact, a kid. I, you know what? I'm, like, I'm gonna do you was, one I, better. I can't even say the game is bad. It's just yeah. it's the same game. It, it's the same mechanics that I played ten years ago, and I'm not. I wasn't a fan then, and I'm not a fan. But of no, that. I'm gonna do you one better. If you hate the way that Battlefront plays, don't play Battlefield One. Oh, because he used the same game design. Dice, Dice is, has, is, has no qualms with being like, look, we're just going to reskin this game. Like, the, the only difference is the theater and, of course, you know, the other things that are added in Battlefield that make Battlefield Battlefield. But mechanically, it shoots and feels just like Battlefront. If you played enough Battlefront, you know I, you would know that. I will give them the sound design is still amazing in that game. For what Battlefront? Yeah, especially Battlefront. But I say both. Oh yeah, but both. No, but it's like Dice just took that and that is what they redefined for the visuals and you know how the game moves, how your soldier moves, and things like that. They just took that from Battlefront and just transitioned to Battlefield One. That's why Battlefield One feels so fluid because. Battlefront was a very fluid shooter. It just didn't have the content that people wanted, I guess. That was that would be its only failing. It just didn't have the content that people wanted or the game style that people wanted. Whereas I guess Battlefield if One anybody that tells me I'm wrong, go play Battlefront Two. Battlefront One, come back to me and tell me how great that game is. Oh yeah, no. You could go and look at it and you'd be like, huh? Because after I got into so many arguments with people over this, I actually went and looked, and I would show them video, and it's like, y'all really don't see this, do y'all? Y'all are that fucking blind. <laughs> You're like, 
I just. I just want you to know. I just don't get people like. I I sound really hostile about it for those out there, but that's just because it's a it's not just a battlefront game issue. It's an issue overall where people. Yeah, it's a gaming issue. Period. People have these. People will never like let their rose tinted glasses even falter for a second to the point where they're like, "No, what the solution is to bring back the old." Yeah, like, oh my god, I cannot fucking wait. I cannot fucking wait when they do announce this damn Call of Duty and it's put back like in a World War II era or a modern era, and then all these people scream, Why "Yes, so slow, boots on the ground," and then you realize. It's the still same bullshit perks. This why? Why? The why still is, but why is the game feel me. slower? Why do they only have these type of guns? Why are there so many? Gonna be, no, you're gonna get the perks. The like bullshit. Like you complained about with Modern Warfare Three and some of Modern Warfare Two back, and then you're gonna realize, you know what? It's not that it needed to be put back to the way it was. You're tired of this shit. This shit's not as good as it was back when you first started. I, and I cannot wait till that realization hits a lot of people. So I can sit. I will do a one hour, one man podcast just the, of me laughing my ass off at people when that happens, too. I will be willing to do that. Because it's it's going to it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Mark my words. Mark my fucking words. To those, and to those out there that, that say we're wrong. I hope I am. I yeah, mean, for your I sake, I hope I am. I hope like the, the you know the next Call of Duty comes out and this it's everything in your mouth, wildest imagination. Hey, I hope this Battlefront appeases that twisted, misguided imagery that you have in your head of the original Battlefront and appease that. Hey, but I know I ain't wrong in this, so man. so that's why I'm being a dick about it because. Yeah, I know I'm right. <laughs> so moving on from the f- that fuckery from a from a from a sad note, some people would say happy. Well, not, I mean, it's not sad for me because well, again, happy, yeah. It's, no, I'm I'm giddy. I get to fucking kill can Kylo you, Ren, and you, son of a bitch. And can you get the DLC that's gonna come out with that movie? Yay! They actually there's no DLC for bet, this game. They say bet. No, they've already put the official now. They were like, we're not doing traditional DLC. So what I'm nope. thinking, nope. What I'm thinking is what I'm thinking is they're gonna do a Titanfall too. You said it right there. Because that's what yeah, they always not do. Gonna, we're not gonna do traditional. They're not doing DLC. the season pass. So yeah. No, I'm thinking they're gonna do a Titanfall um too. To All of the honest. maps are free. Oh my god, maps are free. Yeah, before Call of Duty started selling you four maps for $15, $20. Developers did this great thing of releasing maps for their game. Yeah, no, it used to happen all the time. And, hey, if you were on PC back there, guess what? Mods existed then, too. You may not think so, but, yeah, I remember I was there for the 90s. Mods were there. Oh, and to everybody out there that is wondering, you can blame all of my anger on Atlas. If they didn't do that stupid policy, I wouldn't be this angry. <laughs> Policy really annoys me. I know. Even if they didn't do that, I'd still be a dick about the Call of Duty thing. So. No, I wouldn't. Call of Duty is a great game that you should go out and buy. <laughs> have I bought it? I mean, I may or may not have sold my copy for another video game, but why should we discuss that now? Mm. I may have never played the game either, beyond the beta. Mm-hmm. You didn't need to play that game beyond the beta. It was a Call of Duty game. That's it. Yeah. Anyway, so the grand topic of the week, which goes back to Twitch. Um, Twitch has been in the news a hell of a lot lately. It's been it sparked like this is Twitch the is third since, conversation that we've had about. I would even go Twitch. since the last TwitchCon, not the most recent TwitchCon, but the TwitchCon before that. Since that, Twitch has literally been like every few months at least had a major news yeah it has which is i mean they hey they're doing what they uh need to to keep themselves relevant i guess um so 
if you haven't heard, Twitch announced after it was leaked. And a leak. Um, and I would. I wish I people, could know. People reading it, reading which, emails silently. Um, from what I heard, uh, Andy Milikanakis or whatever his name is, uh-huh. was doing an IRL stream, got the email, and just read it aloud, and then figured out the part about confidential. <sighs> and then somehow screenshots of the email were shown. I don't know about all that. Somehow uh-huh. screenshots got out, and it was on the Twitch Reddit. And then every Twitch broadcaster and their mom that didn't do that was like, hey, you shouldn't randomly, you know, leak things. And then people also responded of, hey, Twitch, you should also use NDAs so people can't leak things. Well, I also blame some of the streamers that didn't do that, too, because a lot of us wouldn't know that about that leak if it wasn't for the other people who were like, yo, we just heard something because... I was actually watching somebody stream, and a friend of this stream forwarded them the email on their stream. They didn't say what it was, but like, oh my god, this email is so great from Twitch. It's like everybody's I mean, in the chat, like, I, what's going I, I, on? I so it's like people built the suspense so, even without saying anything. So the funny thing is, I read this, and I was talking to a friend who's a partner on Twitch, and I happened to mention to him, I was like, hey, so did you get whatever this email was? No, no, I don't think so. I don't remember. What when would it have been? What would it have been? I'm like, it would apparently have been some type of an email that came this morning that apparently is confidential. And then all of a sudden he was like, This morning? Oh yeah, they sent something out and then he clicks it and oh my what? And I'm like, wait, the fuck is this that I'm missing? Like you said, it built me to the point of like so what, it was like and you know, know people coming. with natural curiosity, some people were gonna go and like maybe it's on the like maybe it is on the internet because people like to leak every fucking thing these days. I did a poll yeah. where I asked people if they like leak. People were like, Yeah, I like leak. I'm like I'm sorry, I'm old surprised. school. I wanna be surprised sometimes. Um I will also just I wanna be surprised <laughs> most of the time. Like I don't like the su- the surprise of seeing Spider-Man on Sony stage last year. That was fucking awesome. But when they showed God of War, it wasn't that surprising because they've been talking about hey, Sony's probably working on it. They working on it. There's rumors that such and such just came back to it. It's like, okay, so basically uh, you guys were right. You leaked it. You know what I mean? Like, let me let let us have those big moments. I don't need you tell everything god damn it <sighs> sorry god <laughs> sorry i just had to go off on that but twitch is going to have a tiered um subscription program oh my yeah. god what no i just i was just reacting oh no shit like everybody fucking else yeah don't do that because then you're going what what you know, but no, they're gonna have the plan where you have the regular five dollar um subscription, then there's gonna be ten dollar tier, there's gonna be a twenty five dollar tier, they're gonna leave it up to um the partners to build certain incentives for each tier. Now um, I like I, and I do want to clarify something that I know a lot of people asked about because the same thing happened when bits came out. The split is exactly how you would think it is. Except, except for um except for the the twenty five dollar tier. For those that don't know, a five dollar sub on Twitch, um, there's a rate a revenue split that is most people will say bait it starts at a base of fifty per fifty. Uh from there, um there the ten dollar tier is worth two subs. So obviously you pay ten dollars, you get two subs worth of uh for the broadcast in terms of revenue split. What come, becomes interesting is when you get to the $25 tier, which counts as six subs worth of, worth of revenue. That's where for broadcasters, this could be a significant bump for people that want um, a, a, a or have long running people that are willing to shout out money. And that sounds really weird to say, but willing to pay more and go above and beyond. And it, it created this weird idea of where people were like, well, why do they get exclusive emotes and why do they get this and that? And 
a whole bunch of other ideas brought to the platform just because they do that well because they're paying more money than you are a twitch sub is sixty dollars a year somebody that's paying twenty five dollars a month uh pays that in two months and they have to multiply that by six <laughs> so what they're paying 300 compared to 60 and you don't think that that's a little deserving of maybe something extra yeah but it's like they you know what and how far are these because uh, i've heard stuff like extra special emotes and <laughs> things like that it's like i'm sorry you get access to my Snapchat if you subscribe for $25 a month. It's like, I'm sorry. Wait, I get an exclusive emote? What? But I think I think that huh? to, me, to me, the rewards don't matter because well, no, and because I always make the point of like somebody that just wants to support you will probably take the cheapest tier. Why? Because that's just generally how people work. It's the people that want to go above and beyond. They don't really necessarily want something. If you just want the most of the emotes... Go ahead and put it on five. Well, no, I would say the people who would do the twenty-five and the ten would be your strongest supporters, most than anything. But no, that's I mean, what I mean. Like the basic supporters that just want your emotes are just going to go for five dollars. This is yeah. for the people. That's why it doesn't. If they get an extra emote, why do you care? They're paying five times as much as you for one extra emote. Is that yeah. emote worth twenty dollars to you? Then pay it. Yeah, no, it's it's kind of a weird um to a lesser extent a patreon type of thing game wisp and patreon um yeah it's yeah probably more like game wisp uh, but no I'm, it's it's all in that fan funding but yeah yeah it's like if you wanted you when you do the 25 you're somebody who wants to see this person like be you know financially successful at this you're trying to help them be bigger again, and like, you know so again you could argue that if somebody was good enough they need 20 percent of the subs to reach the same level uh as other broadcasters if you somehow convince every one of your subs to sub for 25 dollars, you need 20 percent of the subs which means instead of 100 subs you need 20 to equal that same value Which should kind of say something, which which is super helpful, and I think that's the greatest thing I like about Twitch as of late. Between Twitch Prime and this, and I like how they did this. This gives you a reason to not just use your Twitch Prime sub. Your Twitch Prime sub is now literally just for like, what channel do you really like? Want to just support, or you don't have the money for, or you just like their emotes? Yeah, and then they've created these other tiers for people that are like want to kind of go above and beyond. Go beyond Twitch. Yeah, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, I know there's some people who have issues with it, of course, and who wants to scream bloody murder and it's about greed and blah 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 blah. But it kind of goes back to what we were saying again about the streaming thing. Um, you don't have to participate in this, therefore. It should not affect you to the point of anger that someone has the opportunity to get $25 a month to stream. Um, if it angers you that much, fucking go out, get some equipment, start streaming, and hopefully you can get to that point to be $25 exactly. a month. Because um, outside of that, there's no fucking reason for you to be mad unless you're just jealous that you're not getting the money. It's not affecting your lifestyle. It's not hurting your wallet. Um, you know, people who do that, do that on their own volition. Um, okay. You think they're stupid. Fine. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not going to change anything. It's still going to happen. So why the fuck are you upset? You know, it's not like Twitch is telling you, give us the $25 that you would give to charity. <laughs> or you have to give us a portion of your, you know, allotment for food 
you know, things like that. These are people who are voluntarily, willingly doing this. Twitch isn't sticking up anybody. The streamers what aren't sticking mean? up anybody. The option is there. I have to click on the highest number. Hmm? Well, then that's you wanting to click on the highest number. If if you are that easily suggested, I suggest that you get your shit together and not be so gullible. Otherwise, what the problem is, as my boy used to say. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I like the idea, but it's always that shit. You shouldn't have to account for other people's stupidity. Yeah. You know, there's going to be people out there who's going to, like, try to push this hard and be like, hey, God, you should really, really. And it's like, hey, at the end of the day, this is more than just a passion. It is a business to a lot of people. I mean, it's their livelihood. You know, and some people are going to do some things that you don't agree with. Not everybody's going to do that, but, hey, it happens. It, again. You don't have to support them if they do that. So, again, what the problem is, just don't fucking support them. If that's your issue. You have anything else to add, sir? <laughs> you don't seem like you're in such a good mood about this. Think <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm reading some <laughs> personal messages and oh my Oh my um there are things going on that you guys should not be privy to. We're gonna have a interesting discussion afterwards. Uh that's going to definitely uh, be hilarious. But uh, needless to say, we have touched on the biggest topics that are happening in gaming. Uh, while Zero Strix has to take care of something, I'm going to take care of some business really quick. Um, so, a couple of things about these podcasts, which we're going to be discussing. Uh, there's some big events coming up in gaming, um, in particular, E3. E3 is going to be the biggest of them all for most people. Um, we are looking for suggestions as far as what you want from us when it comes to E3, how we should handle um, our coverage of it. Uh, I plan on spending the whole day probably streaming um, perhaps we should do a live 24 hour podcast that I won't post anywhere, um, in audio format. Cause who wants to sit and listen to people talk about that? Well, and I said 24 hours, it's either it's not going to be 24 hours, but pretty much the length of each presentation we would have possibly, um, our live reactions or at least give a post show overview of everything i don't know which people would prefer i think posts would probably benefit better as far as podcast format um but it's some stuff that we will definitely have to uh work out uh let's see what's on the docket for e3 let me pull that up really quick. I do my stretching thing as well. Uh, because we have some shifts in the schedule. Microsoft's going on Sunday. They've departed from doing the um, intro on the official first day of the official first day of E3, they're going to go Sunday. Um, okay, so here's the tentative schedule for E3. And this is going to be interesting because now I realize I have to adjust uh, some timetables for myself. Okay, so 
EA is going on Saturday, June 10th. Um, they don't have the time down for when that's going to happen, but that's when EA is going to start with the EA play and their briefing is going to be on that day. Um, Microsoft's going Sunday, June 11th at 2 p.m. Pacific time, which for me and Strix would be 11 a.m. on Sunday. Um, and then Bethesda is going on Sunday as well, probably sometime in the evening. Uh, so, huh, wonder how huge the gap is going to be between those two. Um, and then, of course, you're going to have Ubisoft, which generally goes on the first day of um, E3, which is Monday, June 12th, but not very sure um, of when. Of course, it's going to precede Sony, because Sony tends to go late around 9 p.m. Eastern time, which is 6 p.m. Then, uh, Pacific. Um, so that'll be the ender. Nintendo, we don't know if they're going to do a full conference. Probably not. They'll probably just do their treehouse thing on the preceding day, the 13th, like they normally do. Um, so the question is, and I'm probably going to put a poll up somewhere, how would you want us to cover E3? Like, what would be preferable? Would you want just a one-day um, all-out, uh, how can we say this? Like, just every conference we jump on, we do something, we jump off afterwards after we do our uh, summation, and, you know, that's it? Or do you want us to just do one big overview show, um, possibly each day. Uh, that, that's the that's the thing. I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to cover E3. Of course, there's going to be some other game conferences that may matter to you guys. Um, you guys, I will let you set the tone and see what you would want us to highlight the most. Um, like Gamescom, I know Gamescom is not as big as it used to be, uh, but, you know, we can do that. Uh, there's the Sony PlayStation experience um, that people may want to see. Uh, what else? Uh, it's, it's a lot of stuff that's going on, and there's some other things that I've been contemplating as far as podcast goes. Uh, but me and Gerald Strix will try to figure out what is best to be prepared for. And of course, I'm going to want to bring on some other people. There's a few people I have in mind who I think you guys will like to see um, and hear from, hear their opinions. It should it, it should be as entertaining as possible, um, definitely. But uh, that's it as far as that. As far as other shows, of course, like this one, we always will record it on YouTube, and then it will be issued through SoundCloud on other formats. Um, so you can pick this up in audio format, or you can just... Uh, Watch the video. Um, question for you, sir. Yeah. Uh, while you were you where you had to step away for a minute, I was talking about E uh, three plans and about what I what would be the best way to work that into this podcast. Um, How about we don't do a podcast where we stream this entire thing because that was that is incredibly taxing. That's what I was saying too. Because <laughs> I remember. Asked- about that and I was like I remember we've done that like kind of two years consecutively and yeah because people what people don't realize is you essentially go and you have an hour between each conference and well, like see, so 
And this is the thing. This year is going to be more messed up because I was going over the schedule. Um, here it is. So EA is on Saturday, June tenth. Because you know they don't do the whole regular each three thing. They do their EA Play, whatever. But they're doing their briefing on the tenth. Microsoft isn't going to be on that Monday. They're going to be on Sunday at eleven a.m. our time, two p.m. Pacific. And then Bethesda's on Sunday as well. Wait, that's way too many on Sunday. I heard Sunday will eat what? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. So Microsoft Sunday now, Bethesda Sunday, EA Saturday, and then you got Ubisoft Sony on Monday, and then Nintendo whenever they decide to do, if they do anything. That's my issue. That's my issue. I can't, I can't do like y'all like to just to say, remember two years ago, I guess when we did it. Where it literally was like we were, I was streaming the entire day, like that Monday or whatever, where it was literally like, "Hey, it's the first conference." All right, everybody, what are you gonna? And then afterwards, what people weren't seeing was I think I had it set up to where the stream never went down. We just went on break until the next conference, and it was like, "Uh, X, Y, and Z is going on." All right, let's. So, what's everybody doing? Like, I'm getting food. And I'm hoping the food gets here. And it's cool to watch it live and to be able to like have the initial reaction, but it's not worth it. No, it's not. And I was thinking maybe like a post conference thing, maybe. Like we could, where we could sit and we could watch and then like we do a quick short. Yeah. Um because I think that's for the most part. Like I what I also found is like the conferences, I need them to cut out the actual bullshit. I don't care how many of your conference your consoles sold. I don't need you to hype up A, B, and C. Like I would love for Microsoft just to be like, "This is the Scorpio. This is how much it costs, and these are the games." And play trailers for the better part of an hour. And that would be like a perfect conference to me. Little to no actual downtime because the majority of the conference is focused on just giving as much content as humanly possible. Similar to what Sony did last year. Yeah, I just want to see what you're going to come out with. I don't need. But what do you mean about the, don't you love the terrible and creepy banter or cringy banter? Excuse me, not creepy. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, Holmes. Uh. That's what, that's what my issue is. That's a hundred percent what my issue is Uh, for, um, for the conferences, like I partially kind of don't even want to necessarily watch the conferences because nine times out of ten, like people do super cuts, or I could literally just go read an article that will take me ten minutes and then watch all of the trailers. And it's it's rather than like long ago, and I did like I don't need the moving on up from like the beginning story. You don't honestly care about that. You know that I I care. I mean, I care about it, but I don't care about it enough. As a game developer, I don't care about it enough to want to sit through like an hour and a half of that shit. Yeah, I agree. Especially not if they are doing as many conferences as you mentioned. That'd be yeah. infuriating. But yeah. I'll do it if you're down to sit through and watch. I'm down. Uh, although I may not be able to do, depending on what time Bethesda's or whoever's last goes. Unless I stream earlier that day, but that's always possible as well. Oh, there's that. Uh, yeah, it's... <sighs> it's 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 uh, it's going to be weird. It's going to be weird because everybody want, wants to spread out so much. That's the problem. Oh, my God. And then they, they can be long. Like, EA, I'm sorry, uh... If you're an EA fan, fuck it. I, I'm making this call now. I don't care. If you want to cover it, do it on your own volition. Fuck them. I'm not listening to them talk about FIFA for an hour. Um, I'm good. They're going to do it. They do it every year. Yes, every year. They they do some extra long FIFA bullshit. I'm not doing it. Fuck them. Um, 
Uh, Because basically, which I mean, the only thing that they're going to show that I'm going to actually probably care about is Battlefront. Um, Don't you care about (laughs) NBA Live? No, um, that game's going to be garbage, like it's always. Um, Madden, fuck that shit. What about about the other Star Wars games they told us about last? Now, I was just about to say, now, if they do show the... uh, Star Wars games made by the people who made Dead Space. Uh, I forgot the name of the studio just that fast. Okay, cool. I want to see what Stig is in. Um, visceral. And headed, yeah, Visceral. I want to see what Stig Osmussen and Annie and hey, Annie is doing. You know, cool. Show me that. You do better for me if you show me fucking 1313 is back, goddammit. Still killing that shit off anyway, but um, yeah, other than that, what are you gonna show me? Yeah, you ain't gonna show me shit. You ain't gonna show me shit. I right, fuck Madden. Yo, y'all need to bring out like y'all need I to like talk about, but I don't want to hear about it. I need to talk out, uh, beat out last year, bring out Pele, and then bring out Drake and have that just be your entire conference. Oh, we may. I well, that's it. Never mind. You said it, yeah, you're not Ubisoft. Uh, yeah, no. Oh, well, well you we saw. Yeah, see. We'll actually get the release date of. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I I gotta make that call too. Fuck the Ubisoft. Um. Even though I'm curious about the next Assassin's Creed, what's that's gonna be like? Um. Ubisoft's gonna bore the hell of us with fucking Just Dance. Oh, I was gonna say, but what about what what about the release date for? Uh, What's that game called? Uh, South Park. Well, yeah, I would like to know that, but it's like there's going to be a couple of things. But I, for me, it's mostly about their presentation, and I know how they're like EA and Ubisoft. Their presentation style, nah, nah. I mean, I'm cool with Aisha Tyler. Uh, but they, no, they need you're to bring going her back. to. She's the best host at E3. Yeah, but you're going to bring out some fucking pop music star to do a five minute set or to pre- well, for this song because it's on Just Dance, and then spend another ten minutes trying to hype up the fucking Just Dance game. Although it was quite entertaining when Jason Derulo tried to hit on Aisha Tyler, like boy, was she's married too. Probably not her type. Get the fuck off stage. Um, but yeah, nah, that. I mean, Ubisoft's gonna show some interesting stuff. Like honestly, all of the sub, comp of sub stuff, like Ubisoft, Bethesda, EA, that can be folded into one. As far as I'm concerned, because I don't think. Any of them is going to do anything to warrant their own show. To be quite on. True. Yeah, because yeah, they're just not going to have enough content. Um, uh, yeah, definitely wanted to. Keep, Microsoft has to be done because they're about to announce new hardware. So it's going to be interesting to see how they back that up. And of course, Sony, they always seem to. Like lately, Sony has been basically we're just waiting for everybody else so we can fucking kind of steal the show <laughs> at the end of the day. So there's always that, um, or they do colossal failure, which hey, either way, that'll be big to talk about, you know. So, <sighs> but yeah, we'll figure it out. Like I said, you guys could send suggestions. What you think would be cool for it? Um, I'm more than open. You can send it to wiseguygse at gmail.com or at wiseguygse on Twitter. However, the DMs are open on there. I know I'm opening up the floodgates when I say that, but I can block people just as easily <laughs> as I want. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, but yeah. By the way, did you have anything else to add as far as the Twitch 
Go support Twitch broadcasters. And if you don't want to su- support somebody on Twitch, go head on over to GameWorks.com slash your restricts and drop me some money. Thank you. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. Okay. So, as I stated before, you can always catch the show here live on well, not live, but you can catch the video version on YouTube, or you can head over to SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, or Stitcher, and catch the audio format over there. Um, it's free of charge. You can download the audio and take it on the go with you if you want, or just stream it from one of those platforms. However you want to do it, please go check out Euro Tricks, like I said. Every night on Twitch, 10 to 3. Um... You will be entertained, to say the least. Yep. You will be entertained. Um, and you can if hit us. If like gameplay, then conversation will definitely get you. Yeah, that is very true. And of course, you can always catch us on Twitter. I'm Black underscore Magus. Drop the C. Uh, he is Euro Strix. And Euro Strix. That's yeah. about it. I guess I shouldn't mention the YouTube anymore. It should be one of those angry YouTubers because YouTube's screwing everybody, as they say. I know I just triggered you about. <laughs> I'm not talking about it. People don't get it. Like, here's the thing. I want. All right, all right. I'll address that really quickly. People, for me, what about YouTube? Like. Y'all are just at where I was like a year ago. <laughs> like, I've been done with this platform for so long. And now everybody's like, oh, my God, we're only getting 20% of our revenue. No. I'm like. The writing's been on the wall for a while, people. And sorry. YouTube, YouTube did not get, like, the moment YouTube kids became a thing and <laughs> they had no need for you anymore. <laughs> kids will watch anything <laughs> and don't care about ads that much either. Nope. Uh, yeah, fun times, fun times. Uh, I, the amount of shit I see talked about on YouTube now, it's, it's hilarious. It is hilarious. Anyway, let's go before we start another controversy. Um, I'm done causing trouble for the weekend. All right, guys, so make sure to look for us next weekend. Feel free to subscribe. We will be back with another episode soon. So say goodbye to the lovely people. Good, sir. Goodbye. And I will bid you guys adieu as well. Take care. And we'll see you in the next episode of Mouse Clicks. Enjoy. Peace. Peace.